Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and it's time to talk about one of the most common plants in pretty much every planted tank out there that you can take advantage of to make actually a pretty good profit source. We're going to talk about the Microsorum species, which most of you probably better know as Java fern. So, there's tons of types of Java ferns. Everything from the most common, the most common standard just Java fern to narrow leaf, needle leaf like this one here. We've got Wendelov over in tanks here, and I'll, I'll overlay stuff so you can see it. And then you've got all sorts of rarer species. I keep several of them. Let me give you some examples of just the names. They're all going to be Microsorum species. Spoon, Tricolor, Singapore Dark, this, <laughs> Singapore, this, that, Trident, Thor's Hammer. There are a ton of different Microsorum species. Tons of different Java ferns. What makes them so popular? They're easy. Java fern by its nature, like is an epiphyte plant so you can attach it to wood attach it to rock keep it floating like this big hunk right here and it will grow just fine and it's a rhizome just like anubius just like boos but it's a really really thin rhizome in fact let's get one out of the tank and show you so i've got this little bitty chunk of needle leaf java fern and <laughs> I might have to like really mess with it so that you can see it, but I wanna we'll we'll have to zoom in here. Give me just a sec, we'll zoom in, but So I have this teeny tiny piece of Java for a needle leaf. This is a baby out of a tank. And you can just see as I've got zoomed in, look proportionate to my fingers and face. You can see these nice long needle leaves off this baby. But if you look here, you've got those nice brown roots and this very thin rhizome right here. Now it's not always green like this. Sometimes the rhizome of some microsorum species is brown, but you can when they get bigger. You don't want to do it this small. Just like Anubius, divide that rhizome in half to split it. Or in the case of this teeny tiny baby plant here, this grew as an adventitious plant. Let's talk about that. So this little baby that's in my hands, now that we're zoomed out a little bit, an adventitious plant is what I called it. What the heck does that mean? So if we look at like this big java fern that's floating here, over time, if you look at the back of a java fern's leaves, there'll be these little typically brown or black spots. Those are seed pods for these little babies. And typically to get these seeds to sprout and to turn into baby plants, we have to stress the plant out a little bit. It doesn't always have to be that way, but that's the most common way to get child plants. Now, if you are growing in a really good environment, say you're using CO2 and fairly strong light at a very minimum good medium light to, you know, something strong like sunlight out of a window, a Fluval 3.0, or maybe even something bigger than that, like a UNS Titan where you're going really crazy, that much light is going to cause those babies to grow naturally. Now, if we're not using a higher tech setup like that, the way that we would do this is we would take a java fern that has lots of seed pods and we would purposefully stress it out. And the way that we would do that is either deny it light for several days, deny it nutrients, make it think that it's going to die. And what it will do is it will sprout all of those seed pods and you need just enough nutrients to kind of keep it alive to make it have enough to sprout all of those. You will probably kill the parent plant doing this. Keep this in mind. but. You'll get tons and tons and tons of babies. And once you see those start to sprout, now resume full light, full everything. And when you get your babies, in the case of needle leaf, about this size here, and if like when, uh, the Wendelovs or standard Java ferns, when they're about an inch, inch and a half long, you should be able to lightly run your hand along the, if this is the leaf, like run the back of the leaf, and these will just break free. And once they naturally break free, where you don't have to tug on them, they just kind of break free with light pressure. That's when the baby is ready and you have a fresh plant that you can move into a brand new system, just like that. Now, how do I grow them and make them a profit source? I grow a lot of java fern. As you guys know, in the guppy mansion right beside me, there is a ton of java fern windelob, and we've shown that earlier. 
We'll do a little overlay right now. Big, huge chunks of Java from Windelob. So much so that I've moved it to other tanks. There's extras up in my shrimp growing tanks, all that kind of stuff. How the heck do I grow this much Java fern? That's the easy part. Let's say that you're just starting Plants for Profit. I would not suggest Java fern as a profit plant at first, especially if you're going no CO2. Once you have CO2, now is where java fern is actually very, very efficient. And there are species that I would target. I would look at needle leaf, narrow leaf, uh, sometimes wendelov, but if you happen to be in some of the areas where plants are very common, start looking at rarer species. Singapore dark, trident, Thor's hammer. These are some examples, not necessarily all super rare. The Singapore dark's a little rare, you could go for super rare stuff like Spoon and all these crazy things. Don't try to hunt those down. They're way too expensive. Stick with the easy stuff. Find Trident Java Fern. Very, very popular. If you can find Thor's Hammer, it's kind of like a neat version of Trident. Get that one. Or just identify what's really popular. If you've got a lot of Aquascapers in your area, you want to grow as much Needle Leaf Java Fern as you can possibly grow because this stuff is used, I swear, in every aquascape known to man because it looks amazing. Like, look at this floating mass. It's blurry, but it looks cool. And if you were to plant it in a rock, you got all these super thin leaves just poking out in any direction you want to point it, it looks amazing. Takashi Amano used tons and tons of needle leaf and sometimes even narrow leaf if you wanted a broader leaf size java fern. So Microsorum is actually really good if you have a lot of aquascapers. Now, it's also beginner friendly. It doesn't need high light. Low light and medium light are all that any of your microsorums actually ever need until you get to like the crazy rare stuff. And then some of those really just, they need CO2. But CO2 is how you make these things go crazy. This one right here, this big ball mass. And I would note that the root ball on this thing is about the size of my fist. And if I plant this somewhere, the whole leaf structure is gonna be about the size of my head. I got this as a piece from a friend, which shout out to Alyssa Bentley, about, yay big, just maybe three times the size of that little baby plantlet I just showed you. And it's huge. And this is without me trying to purposely accelerate the growth in a way that would give me lots and lots of plants. So what I would do if I were you and you wanna grow microsorum species, any kind of java fern, especially something like a needle leaf, narrow leaf, any of those semi more common, but very popular Java ferns out. Get your first rhizome, you know, yay long, or if it starts branching off, begin to separate it into about inch and a half to two inch pieces. Tie each one to a small piece of lava rock, a small piece of wood, or a personal favorite. If you get some coconut husk, and cut them into like little one to two inch squares, maybe even three inch. Really, I would go about this size, which is probably about two and a half inches square. Tie them onto that. It gives a nice flat surface for all of the rhizome to grow and grab its roots onto, but also just can sit flat in a tank somewhere. Line all of those pieces up in a tank, give them a little bit of flow, decent light and a little CO2 and not a lot. Remember, Plants for Profit, the way that I've done it for a long time in this tank behind me, it's only three bubbles every two seconds. That's nothing for a 40 breeder. And getting a tank like this where you can stack a decent amount of it in a spot, like say the front corner of this tank was just young java ferns growing out, you can get a lot of java fern growing and do it fairly fast. And once you start splitting that java fern into lots of small java ferns, now you've got lots of them that are gonna grow all at good speed because you put a little bit of CO2 and some good light. Something like this setup here where it's uh, an AC 110 or you could use a, a Fluval like 40 or 30, probably 306, four might be a little much, but any of those like canisters or better yet a sump. Man, if you had a sump, it's even better because now you can store extra Java ferns underneath in the sump as you start growing them out. You can put the babies in the sump where the water might be a little more still and keep the parents up top or the opposite way if you want to double light it. 
a Fluval 3.0 light, like something similar. You could do this with a Phoenix 24-7. You can even do it with a Beams work if you really wanted to. If you're looking to save a little bit, I would personally opt for the Fluval, but that's just a matter of I can control everything in the app. And the, the Java ferns tend to come from areas that have a little bit more red light. So I want to control that. I want to push that red light a little higher when I can. If you can't, don't worry about it. Water temperature, it, it really doesn't care. You can go like 68 to 82 and it, it won't care. Java fern is like bulletproof. It's one of those plants that's super easy. And that's why it's really good for plants for profit. We can take this plant and go to any beginner and go, hey man, all you gotta do is glue or tie this to a rock or wood. It's gonna start growing out. It looks really great. You just use water column ferts. You don't even have to have special root tabs or any crazy fertilizer. It doesn't have any super huge demands. It can take hard water, it can take soft water, it can take low pH, it can take high pH. It's super crazy versatile what Java fern species can do, and yet they're used all over the place. Like look at pretty much every really beautiful ABA aquascape you've ever seen. There's Java fern in it somewhere. Almost always the needle leaf stuff, but there's some there. Any nature aquarium, like George Farmer uses Java fern constantly and with good reason. It's an easy plant for customers, it's low maintenance, but it's beautiful and impactful and has a unique appearance. And that's why it's so popular. It's a unique type of appearance, it's super easy, and it goes into spots where traditionally plants don't grow as well. Epiphyte plants have that popularity because you can wedge them into rock and wood and they can grow along it in an almost like symbiotic relationship and just thrive, be amazing and look cool and add to that cool aesthetic. Now, if you're doing a simpler tank, one piece of wood, well, you just start pushing these in on your wood or, or tying them, however you want to anchor them. And you can even, like mine, grow them floating. I have seen really great and you guys have seen it in the 75 long. Pieces of PVC pipe, where they cut them in half, so it's a half pipe, and they drill holes so that you have anchor points, and they will just tie threads through those anchor holes in order to tie the java fern down along these PVC half pipes, and it gives them long, stable things to weigh it down and hold it in the water. It's actually a really good grow strategy, by the way, if you want to try that out. I personally prefer the little coconut husks or lava rock. Lava rock probably be my favorite because you could pull up a piece of lava rock that has a nice good starter and just go here you go just plop this as is in your tank that'll be 10 15 bucks whatever depends on your local area how you want to price it but seriously it's that simple this is why microsorums especially some of the simpler stuff the more common stuff are actually really good for plants for profit so let's go over the keys here number one to make this efficient because they'll grow slow naturally, you do need CO2. With CO2, they'll grow like crazy. And you'll hit kind of a critical mass and you'll know when it's like, I can harvest tons of baby plants, sell my adults, and my babies will grow out in this amount of time and I'll be able to redo this over and over again. Or I can divide some of my biggest plants and use the babies as the next generation of grow out while I've sold all the stuff I divided and kept you know xyz number of those divided plants good light doesn't have to be super high doesn't need to be a uns titan doesn't need to be an onf flat one it doesn't need to be a twin star but you do want like what we would consider the good medium light at a minimum if you want to do this efficiently especially with co2 uh, i generally would suggest like i said the phoenix 24 7 is okay uh the fluval 3.0 is great for doing this you can do Beamsworks uh, DAF specs, especially if it's in a 40 breeder. That'll give you sufficient light. Keep the CO2 low with that kind of level of light and you will do just fine. If you want to push high CO2, you will need a slightly stronger light. You could look at like your Kessels. Again, I would I would range more toward the Fluval type like uh, par and, and cost range. I wouldn't necessarily look at something that's going to cost you five or $600 out of pocket, but if you want to, do it. I mean, you'll, it just benefits you long term, but be, be willing to take some baby steps. A little bit of flow. These plants can, because they're a slower grower, get algae on them, and that flow helps prevent detritus and things from building up on the plant, even at very small microbial levels that we can't see with our eyes. 
helps keep them clean and looking good, and helps fight off a little bit of that algae if you're having any risks. And then finally, it really doesn't matter your nutrient level, just make sure that you have a reasonable fertilizer regime. Um, I would even look towards something where you're, say, fertilizing every other day. You could do the EI method where it's micros and macros alternating each day. That's perfectly fine, but you don't need to do like, a, if you're trying to grow these really efficiently, you wanna have a more continuous stream of nutrients, not just like if you're doing Easy Green or Thrive or any of the all-in-ones of Bright Well, stuff like that. You don't wanna just do like, okay, it's one pump per 10 gallons once a week. You'll need more than that because you're pushing a little more light and a little more CO2, especially if you wanna get good growth out of these things. They do appreciate a good nutrient load. And if you're not doing a, a good fertilizer regime and you just have fish, actually a high fish load is pretty good for these because they're epiphytes. They pull out of the water system that will help fight off some of those nitrates as all that waste gets processed and turned into nitrates out of ammonia and nitrite. Finally, the last tip I have for you, don't, <laughs> don't oversell your, your microsorbs. One thing I would almost do is if you, if you have multiple tanks, when you get all those baby plants off, be willing to let them go a little slower, move them to a small tank. Maybe you've got a shrimp tank or something full of tens. Like I've got all those tens up there and there's little pieces of java fern wendelov and even some trident in all of them because I took all the baby plants that I harvested out of the guppy mansion over here and threw them up there. There's no CO2 up there, but there's light and there's a little bit of fish load or shrimp load or, or snail load of waste. And they do occasionally get a squirt of fertilizer. Like they'll get one squirt a week because there's no CO2, but it's just enough to let them slowly grow out to get just a touch bigger. Then from there, once they're like, say, inch and a half to two inches, I would even go two to two and a half inches rhizome size, start attaching those to pieces of lava rock, little coconut husks, small pieces of driftwood, whatever your anchor of choice is, PVC pipe, get them into your system where you really wanna grow them out with that CO2 and that good light, and just kind of keep repeating your process. Divide your really big adults into smaller ones so that you have multiple plants growing out, when you get baby plants, make sure to harvest them, grow them out to a certain size. Then they just become another plant to keep pushing and working. And over time, you could get a tank that is literally just farming java fern for you. But because it's one of those plants where it's seen as a slower grower, a little more expensive, but very, very popular, it's really easy to sell for a little bit more. When I take java fern out to swaps and stuff, it's typically the only plant that I charge $10 for instead of $5 for. And I'll have a couple of small, but very healthy baby plants in it where the rhizomes say this big. And you know, you've got at least like this much leaf height to it. And I will put typically three, sometimes even four in a bag and that's 10 bucks. But those sell out faster than anything else I have. All of my java fern and moss always sells first. It's just gone. So that just shows you the popularity because any beginner knows java fern is one of those plants that's easy. Java fern and moss, those are easy plants. Aquascapers use java fern. High-end tanks that do lots of hardscape use java fern. It's very popular in pretty much anything. It almost doesn't matter what fish you have unless they're going to just destroy plants. And even in that case, most of the fish that destroy your stem plants won't touch java fern because it's tougher and it doesn't taste very good apparently they'll just leave it alone. That's another reason why Java Fern is amazing in Plants for Profit. So what I really wanna know from you guys down, down in the comments, tell me what Java Ferns you grow. Have you ever sold any of your Java Fern, maybe to a friend, a club member, you've shipped it online, whatever. I wanna know that down in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, if you learned something new today, give me a thumbs up, help the magical YouTube algorithms out. If you can't stand Java fern, you don't like plants, you think plants for profit is silly, why am I not breeding uh, millions of super rare plecos or whatever crazy nonsense you think is more efficient, you can hit the thumbs down twice. I'll understand. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you love plants, throw me a little subscribe. Stay awesome.